Hitler was one of the few people in Germany who welcomed another war. He wasn't scared. Hitler's magnetism was not only something which could convince enormous crowds, but was also incredibly powerful, like a potent narcotic. Without a doubt, one of the most pervasive and persistent conspiracy theories to have come out of the Second World War is that Nazi leader Adolf Hitler escaped to Argentina in 1945, somehow evading capture to live out the rest of his years in peaceful obscurity. According to the official version of events, Hitler and his wife, Eva Braun, committed suicide in their underground bunker on April 30th, 1945. Hitler died of a gunshot to the head while Braun consumed a cyanide pill. Their bodies were then taken outside and burned by staff before being deposited in a shallow grave. But according to a report in Huffington Post UK, one Abel Bastille of the Instituto Florencio Varela in Argentina claims that the United States helped Hitler escape to South America so that he would not fall into the hands of the Soviet Union. Bastille, who has written extensively on the dictator, told Sputnik News there was an agreement with the US that Hitler would run away and that he shouldn't fall into the hands of the Soviet Union. This also applies to many scientists, the military, and spies who later took part in the struggle against the Soviet regime. So, did Hitler escape to Argentina in 1945, or he really shot himself inside his bunker in Berlin? Before we begin, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. Adolf Hitler is one of the most well-known and reviled figures in history. As the leader of Nazi Germany, he orchestrated both World War II and the Holocaust, events that led to the deaths of at least 40 million people. In the ensuing decades, he was the subject of countless books, documentaries, and TV shows. On April 30, 1945, with the war lost and Soviet troops advancing, Hitler committed suicide in his underground bunker in Berlin, shooting himself. Eva Braun, whom he had recently married, also took her own life. According to Hitler's wishes, their bodies were burned and then buried. At least, that is the widely accepted version of his death. Almost immediately, conspiracy theories began, thanks in part to the Soviets. They initially claimed that they were unable to confirm that Hitler was dead and later spread rumors that he was alive and being protected by the West. When pressured by US press Harry Truman, Soviet leader Joseph Stalin stated that he did not know Hitler's fate. According to later reports, however, the Soviets recovered his burnt remains, which were identified through dental records. The body was secretly buried before being exhumed and cremated, the ashes being scattered in 1970, though a piece of skull bearing a single gunshot wound and not found until 1946 was kept. Such news failed to stem the doubts, however, and they only increased in 2009 when researchers determined that the skull fragment actually belonged to a woman. According to a report in Huffington Post UK, one Abel Bastille of the Institute Florencio Varela in Argentina claims that the United States helped Hitler escape to South America so that he would not fall into the hands of the Soviet Union. Bastille, who has written extensively on the dictator, told Sputnik News there was an agreement with the US that Hitler would run away and that he shouldn't fall into the hands of the Soviet Union. This also applies to many scientists, the military, and spies who later took part in the struggle against the Soviet regime. The historian believes Hitler exited the bunker beneath the Chancellery in Berlin via a tunnel, which took him to Templov Airport, from where a helicopter took him to Spain. From Spain, he traveled to the Canary Islands and then to Argentina in a U-boat. Hitler spent a decade in Argentina before moving to Paraguay, claims Bastille. The former Fuhrer died there on February 3, 1971. Bastille further claims that Hitler was buried in an underground bunker, which is now an elegant hotel in the city of Asuncion. About 40 people attended the burial and in 1973, the bunker. In 2000, Argentina issued a formal apology for its history of harboring Nazi war criminals, but there was no mention of Hitler. In April 2018, the English publication of the memoirs of a Russian interpreter revealed how she had been entrusted with a set of teeth in 1945 and tasked with cross-checking them against the dictator's dental records. They matched and have remained in Russian hands ever since, the Telegraph reported. After months of negotiations, Russia's FSB Secret Service and the Russian State Archives gave the researchers permission to examine a skull fragment and bits of his teeth. The piece of skull had a hole on its left side, consistent with a bullet wound, with black charring around the edges, 
Though scientists weren't allowed to take samples from the skull, they noted in the study its shape seemed totally comparable to radiographies of Hitler's skull taken a year before his death. Gruesome pictures of the teeth published in the study show a jaw made mostly of metal at the moment of his death. They wrote in the report, Hitler had only four remaining teeth. The few there are misshapen, brown at the base, and flecked with white tartar deposits. The analysis corroborated frequently cited claims that Hitler was a vegetarian, but could not conclusively prove whether he took cyanide before the gun shot. Bluish deposits on his false teeth, the researchers wrote, suggest a variety of different hypotheses. Did some chemical reaction take place between his faked teeth and the cyanide at the moment of death, during his cremation, or while the remains were buried? Without taking samples for analysis, it's hard to say for sure. We didn't know if he had used an ampoule of cyanide to kill himself or whether it was a bullet in the head. It's in all probability both, Charlier said. Either way, the study may help finally put details of Hitler's flight to rest once and for all. Never in modern times had a man so insignificantly monstrous become the absolute head of a great nation. It was impossible to dismiss him as a mountebank, a paper hanger. The suffering and desolation that he wrought was beyond human power or fortitude to compute. The bodies of his victims were heaped across Europe from Stalingrad to London. The ruin in terms of human lives were forever incalculable, and it required a coalition of the whole world to destroy the power his political inspiration had contrived.